The Premier of Nunavut says he is deeply disheartened, concerned about a new report from Canada's Auditor General that says the territory is failing to protect vulnerable children in its care. Now, these are issues that go to the very basics of child protection, including a lack of response to children who are in crisis and failing to monitor the well-being of children who are sent to foster care. With more, we're now joined by Canada's Auditor General, Karen Hogan. Karen, thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure being here. Listen, this is not the first time that your office has raised this issue. It's been raised before, the first time going back to 2011. Was anything done between then and now to, to address any of these issues? So you, you are correct, this is our third audit. We did one in 2011 and one in 2014. And we did see uh, some improvement uh, in between 2011 and 2014, but the situation today is much worse than, than it was all the way back in 2011. Uh, in, in my view, a lot of the, the root causes are really so intertwined um, that it's time for a real different approach in, in order to find a, a sustainable solution uh, for, for child and family services. Okay, and when, when we did, just to let people in, we're talking about a meager or no response to, to suspected cases of harm, no evidence of security checks on adults who would be in contact with children in foster homes, no follow-ups on children put into care. Uh, you, you, you talk about root causes. What exactly are the root causes as you see them? Mm -hmm. Well, you're right. I think you, you outlined the, the findings in the report really well. We found um, failures in almost every area that, that we looked at. And, and I think we asked ourselves the obvious question that everyone would is why, why did this happen? Uh, while there are probably many root causes, we identified a few that are really interrelated. One would be funding. Uh, when you don't uh, know how many kids are in your care, it's really hard to know whether you have sufficient resources in order to follow up with them or to provide supports to, to the, their families. Um, the second would be staffing. There is chronic staffing shortages uh, in the territory. At some time, some of the areas have almost 50% of their staff that uh, are uh, positions that are vacant. Uh, so there's a lot of reliance on short four-month four contracts. And, and then because of that, you really need training. But we saw an absence of training. Uh, sometimes uh, individuals uh, would not get training at all because training would only be offered every 10 to 19 months. Uh, and then finally, the last thing I would point to is really uh, the lack of a, a cohesive and, and comprehensive information management system. While that might sound really administrative, it is so important um, because the department was unable to actually tell us how many kids were in their care because they don't have complete files, missing information, or a sense of, of how many children they need to worry about. How, how is that possible? Is it the information exists in one part of the system but not making it into a centralized part of the system or is it that, that the paperwork is just not being filled out? So I mean if that was the case we would have found it because we visited communities and what we found is that some communities um, tracked it in different ways. At times it was just paper files, at times things were on USB keys or on someone's computer uh, who might have then left and then that, that computer's wiped clean. So there really isn't a full database but when there is a file or a case opened uh, for a family or for children we just saw no documentation in so many areas, so no evidence that required monthly check-ins were happening, no evidence that referrals were being acted on or when they were acted on, what the conclusions were. So there, there was just, it, it's so many things that fed into um, uh, you know, poor information and case management. Which, of course, all of this is centered around trying to create what is best for a child in care. So what is the impact to your understanding uh, of these shortfalls to, to children who are in care? I think I would summarize it as there's a, an entire department, the Department of Family Services, whose purpose is to ensure the well-being and care and protection of the children under its care, to support families and communities, and they are failing at that. When they don't know how many children are there, um, or they don't have enough services offered in communities to support families, I mean, we we saw things that if I if I could talk about referrals, we mm -hmm. saw when referrals come from uh, their police officer or a teacher or a member of the community that there's suspected harm. In 20 of the 92 cases, we saw no action activity whatsoever on that referral. And when an investigation was started, half of them were not completed. So it means that children are waiting months 
uh, if not years, for the care and help that they, they need. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly, your report does not come with any recommendations, and that may go to, to what you were talking about earlier, about a different way of trying to address this issue. So, mm -hmm. Can you talk about what you think needs to be done here? So we talked a lot about what would be the right approach, right? We have two previous reports with many recommendations. Those recommendations still hold true today. They need to be acted on. We saw commitments from the government twice and really nothing has improved. And so in my view, we needed to do something different. It wouldn't be a good use of time to sit down and come out with a detailed action plan again. It's a good use of time to sit together with the government and the departments to collaborate better with Inuit organizations in the communities to find a solution because there's an immediate solution needed to deal with the crisis that's right there in front of them, but then long-term sustainable solutions that are needed to deal with those intertwined root causes that have existed for so long. Well, we, we look to see what happens uh, after this report, but Karen, thank you again for the time today. Thank you. And that's Karen Hogan, the Auditor General of Canada.